And people ask me, they say, Jay, how in the world can you still only be paying 8% to your private lenders with no points when interest rates have gone up and shot up out of the roof over the last couple of years? I say, well, there's two answers to that. Number one, you can go down to the bank right now and get a certificate of deposit for 4.5% or 5%. Well, guess what? 8% is still a whole lot more than 45 or 5%. And secondly, here's the big reason why I still pay 8% because I make the rules. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome back to another episode of Multifamily AP360. And today's our guest is Jay Connor from Private Money Authority. So welcome, Jay. Thank you so much for having me on here, Rama. I'm so excited to be here to talk about private money and getting all the money you need for your real estate deals. Absolutely. Thank you. And a little bit about Jay. Jay Connor has been buying and selling houses since 2003 in a town of only 40,000 people with profits now averaging 78K per deal. He has rehabbed over 475 houses and been involved in over $118 million in transactions. Jay has completely automated his annual seven-figure income business to where he works in his buying and selling house business less than 10 hours per week. His passion is motivating and teaching other real estate investors how to raise private money without even asking for money. So with that, Jay, you want to add anything to your background? Oh, I think you covered it, Rama. Uh, my wife, Carol Joy, and I, we live here in eastern North Carolina. You're in Greensboro. I'm in Moorhead City, North Carolina. And as you said, our total target market is only 40,000 people, but we do two to three deals per month, single family house deals here in this area. Our average profit per deal is $82,000 per deal we do. And I don't say that, Rama, to brag. I say that to make a point, and that is you don't have to be in a big market in order to make significant income. I would rather be a big fish in a small pond than a small than a, than a small fish in a big pond yeah thank you very much before jumping details into you know deal level so we'll start with how how exactly get into real estate space jay sure well i was raised in the housing business affordable housing to be specific my father wallace connor at one time was the largest retailer, had the company, the largest retailer of manufactured homes or mobile homes in the nation. And I knew if we ever, if I ever got out of mobile homes and manufactured housing, I wanted to get into single family houses, et cetera. And so I did that in 2003, 2003, my wife, Carol Joy and I, we went full time and we've been investing right here in Eastern North Carolina ever since. Awesome. How exactly started your real estate journey? So share me a little bit more about your first, you know, real estate transaction, you know? Oh, sure. So from 2003, Rama, until 2009, all I knew to do was go to the local bank to fund my deals. And I got on my hands and knees and put my hands underneath my chin and I would beg and say, please fund my deal. And I'd pull up my skirt so the banker could look at my personal assets and my financial statement and, you know, fill out applications and all that. That's all I need to do. And, you know, the banks made the rules. They set the interest rate. They set the length of the note, the frequency of payments and all that. Well, that worked okay from 2003 until January of 2009. And Rama, in January 2009, I picked up my phone. By the way, we still have handsets and cords here in North Carolina, believe it or not. But I picked up my telephone and I called my banker. His name was Steve. And Steve had funded hundreds and hundreds of deals for me in those first six years. And uh, that's where I had my line of credit. So I called up Steve. I told him about these two houses I had under contract for him to fund. And I learned right there on that phone call, Rama, that my line of credit had been shut down. 
I had no line of credit. It was gone. And I said, Steve, what do you mean you've shut down my line of credit? What is going on? And he said, Jay, don't you know there's a global financial crisis going on right now? I said, no, but now you have given me a global financial crisis by shutting me down with no notice. And so I hung up the phone, Rama, I sat right here at this desk and I asked myself a very important question. And this question I'm going to share with your audience right now will serve you no matter if it's a problem in finances, personal relationships, health, business, doesn't matter. The question I asked myself, Rama, when I was shut down from the bank, I asked myself, who can help me with my problem? And by the way, Rama, these people going around saying, oh, every problem is an opportunity. I, it makes me want to throw up. I didn't have no opportunity. I had a problem. I didn't have a way to fund my deals. Well, I immediately thought of Jeff Blankenship, good friend of mine. And guess where Jeff Blankenship lived in 2009? Greensboro, North Carolina. So uh, he was investing in real estate at the time, and we were best of friends. So I called up Jeff. I said, Jeff, you're not going to believe what happened. I said, the bank just closed my line of credit with no notice. And Jeff says, well, Jay, welcome to the club. I said, what club? He said, of the club of losing your line of credit. He said, the bank shut me down in Greensboro, North Carolina uh, last week. I said, well, Jeff, how are you going to fund your deals? He said, well, Jay, have you ever heard about private money? I said, no. He said, have you ever heard about self-directed IRAs? I said, no. He said, well, that's how I'm funding my deals. I said, okay. So I learned about private money. I don't mean hard money. I don't mean any kind of commercial money. I mean private money, getting money from individuals just like you and me that have either investment capital and or retirement accounts that they can move over to a self-directed IRA company and get unlimited money per year, either tax deferred or tax free. I'd never heard of that. So I put my program together and you know what, Rama? I put on my teacher hat. I put on my teacher hat and I, my private money teacher. And I started teaching people in my own network what private money is, how they can get high rates of return safely and securely. And I was able to raise $2,150,000 in private money the very first 90 days of being cut off from the banks. And so here's the difference. Here's, here's what's interesting, Rama. I got 47 private lenders today. Not one of them had ever heard of private money or private lending until I told them about it. And none of them had ever heard of self-directed IRAs and how they can use their retirement funds to loan money out until I taught them. Now, for goodness sakes, if you're listening to this show, you don't need 47 private lenders. You just need one or two to start. But the interesting thing is, Rama, you know, when I was borrowing money from the bank, I had to ask for a mortgage. I had to apply. But in this world, I've never asked for money. I've never asked for a mortgage. I've never pitched a deal. And people all the time ask me to say, Jay, how in the world have you got eight and a half million dollars in private money available to you that you just, you, you know, move from one project to another, all these multiple projects going on? I said, it's simple. First, we teach the program to a potential private lender without saying any kind of anything about a deal. You know, desperation's got a smell to it. The worst time to be raising money for your deals is when you need it for a deal, right? So we teach the program. They tell us how much money they got to invest. And then I call them up with the great news phone call. What's the great news phone call? Well, I get them on the phone and I say, I got great news. I can now put your money to work for you. And then I'll tell them four things about the deal. I'll give them the after repaired value, the location, the funding required, and the closing date. So I'll call them up. I say, I got great news. I can now put your money to work. I got a house in Newport with an after repaired value of $200,000. The funding requires $150,000. I know they got $150,000. They already told me. And if they've moved their money over from a retirement account to a self-directed IRA, they're not earning any money until I put the money to work for them. So I got a house in Newport, after repaired value of $200,000. The funding requires $150,000. You need to wire your funds to my real estate attorney's trust account by next Thursday because closing is next Friday. 
End of conversation. Rama, the most stupid question I could have asked him is, do you want to fund the deal? Of course they want to fund the deal. They've been waiting for the phone call, particularly if they've moved money over to their self-directed IRA. So this world's got nothing to do with begging, chasing, selling, or persuading anybody into loaning us money. It's all about teaching them what it's all about and how they can get involved. Thank you for sharing that. So how exactly this private lending or private money works like from timeline or, you know, returns point of view or, you know, any other criteria? So when you say the timeline, are you talking about the, the length of the note or how long does it take to raise the money? No, no, no timeline. No time. So the notes are two years, two years from the time we borrow the money, but I don't use the money for two years. In this market, you know, we have no inventory down here on the coast. You put a house in the multiple listing service after you've renovated it, it's gone. I mean, gone overnight. So we're reha rehabbing most of these properties. So from the time we borrow the money, renovate the property, get it on the market to sell it, it's typically right now six to nine months from start until cash out. So what kind of returns these private lenders will get? On That's their... a great, I, I love that question, Rama. So I started, so I put the program together in 2009 and started teaching potential private lenders what they could earn. So I started out paying them 8%, 8% back in 2009, no points, no origination fees, a straight 8% APR, annual percentage rate. So I'm only paying interest or accruing interest while I'm using the money. You know what's interesting today, all the way now here in 2024, I'm still paying them 8% with no points. And people ask me, they say, Jay, how in the world can you still only be paying 8% to your private lenders with no points when interest rates have gone up and shot up out of the roof over the last couple of years? I say, well, there's two answers to that. Number one, you can go down to the bank right now and get a certificate of deposit for four and a half percent or five percent. Well, guess what? Eight percent is still a whole lot more than four and a half or five percent. And secondly, here's the big reason why I still pay eight percent because I make the rules, not the lender. You see, when you go to the bar of the bank from, from the traditional bank or a hard money lender, who makes the rules? They make the rules in this world. We make the rules as the borrower. So you see, we're not applying for a mortgage. There's no application. There's no credit score. There's no appraisal. We're not applying for a mortgage. We're offering a mortgage. Awesome. Great strategy. Thank you for sharing that. But you mentioned like per month, you are doing three, three deals you're closing and per day, like you're making like 82K or something. Share us your strategy, like, you know, how exactly that works. In other words, how do I have such high profits? Yeah. Here's the answer. We have such high, two reasons. We have such high profits because number one, we know how to find the motivated sellers. So obviously I'm not buying these properties in the multiple listing service. There's nothing in the multiple listing service. So all these properties are what we call off market properties. These are all for sale by owners. So how do we find these people that are motivated to sell? Here's the answer. Primarily, we're using Google pay per lead, not pay per click, but pay per lead. That means I hire four different companies right now simultaneously that do all the advertising. So people go to Google and they search, sell my house fast, buy my house fast. And of course, they're motivated to sell because they're under some kind of distress. Maybe it's an inherited property. Maybe somebody died and they can't afford the mortgage payment. Uh, maybe they're behind on taxes. Maybe they lost a job. All kinds of reasons. But the majority of our leads are coming in with people searching on Google to find us. And I'll give you an example, Rama. I just went under contract this past Friday night at 7 p.m. at night, buying a ocean front. You would love this, Rama. You would love this. Ocean front condominium way up in the sky. Ocean front, 1,500 heated square feet. That's a pretty good size condominium, ocean front. 
And the after repaired value is $625,000. You know what I'm buying this condo for? $425,000. And the renovation is less than $10,000. All it needs is interior paint and a front door. Now, that's the first way I got it. That came in on a Google pay per lead search. The second reason I, I got this deal is because I was able to close in seven days. That's the magic of the private money. Having access to private money allows you to close super, super quickly. And you know what? The seller had offers from other real estate investors more money, but they couldn't close in seven days. Why was seven days important? Because it's going to the foreclosure courthouse steps in two weeks. And if it goes to the courthouse steps, the seller's getting nothing. But they're getting a nice little chunk of change by me buying it directly from the owner. Got it. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. So what's your exit strategy? Exit strategy for your deals? <coughs> oh, the exit strategy. Yeah. Right now in this market, when I'm buying with private money, all cash, which is the majority of the deals, when I buy with cash, I cash out. I don't want cash buried in a property, right? So if I buy with all private money, then I'm going to put it in the multiple listing service when it's ready to sell and just cash out, list it with my realtor. I got the same realtor for the past 19 years, right? Now, in answer to your question, my exit strategy depends on how I bought it, how I funded it. So if I buy a single family house subject to the existing note, which means the owner of that single family house agrees to sell me the property, transfer ownership into my entity, and I agree to make their payments. I'm not applying to assume their loan. I'm just agreeing to make their payments. That's buying subject to the existing note. That's already on the HUD settlement statement line 204. So if I buy creatively, and I buy subject to the existing note, then I'm going to sell creatively, meaning I'm going to sell rent to own. So if I buy on terms, buying subject to the existing note, that's the same thing as buying on terms. If I buy on terms, I sell on terms, lease purchase, rent to own. If I buy all cash, I cash out. Yeah, got it. Thank you. What is the best way to find these private lenders? There's three categories of private lenders. There are what we call your warm market. Those are people you've got some kind of association with. You go to church with them. You play golf. You hang out. You know, they're on the soccer field, you know, with your kids. They're on the football field. You know, they're in your cell phone, your social media. So that's your warm market, right? That's what I started with, right? How I raised over $2 million in less than 90 days. And how I went about doing that is I didn't run all around town. I put on one luncheon, a private lender luncheon. I bought people lunch. I invited 20 people there. I paid for their lunch. I did a 20 minute presentation on what private money is and how they can get involved with investment capital and or retirement funds. Rama, I raised $969,000 at that first private lender luncheon that I put on. So that's warm market. Second category of where you find these private lenders is what I call your expanded warm market. So I have real estate investors tell me sometimes, Jay, I don't have a good network. My network is broke. I don't know anybody with money. And I, first of all, Rama, I don't believe them. But anyway, I think you should expand your warm market. So, how, so I teach all the time how to expand your connections. I'll tell you one of the quickest ways to expand your connections. Join one of your local business networking international groups. Ivan Meisner founded BNI decades ago. I've been very involved here in Eastern North Carolina in BNI, and I have gotten millions of dollars in private money from my local BNI members referring other people to me that want to get high rates of return safely and securely and be a passive real estate investor. The third category of private lenders are what we call existing private lenders. These are people, individuals that are already loaning money out to real estate investors from either their investment capital or retirement accounts. Where do you find these people? 
Well, there's a number of places you can find them, but I'll tell you one that's free, a free place. So I know, and I, and I recommend a particular self-directed IRA company. This particular self-directed IRA company on the fourth Wednesday night of each month at 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern time has a free networking event on the internet. And did you know that over 70% of account holders at self-directed IRA companies want to invest with their retirement funds and loan out to real estate investors? So they have this networking event on Zoom and they match up and you get in a network and you don't have to have an account at this company. You can just have free networking and you got people wanting to loan you money. But here's the difference, Rama. That is not, you're not putting on your teacher hat. You're not putting on your teacher hat at those events because those private lenders already know the game. They already know what interest rates they are accustomed to getting. So that's not a teaching opportunity. That's a negotiation opportunity. But those are your three categories, your warm market, your expanded market, and existing private lenders. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing that. Would you share any best experience so far? My best experience with private money? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you my best experience was the story about how I got my very first private lender. So I had put my program together after being cut off from the bank. And I want to share how I got my very first private lender without asking for money. So it was on a Wednesday night here in Moorhead City. My wife, Carol Joy, and I, we go to Bible study on Wednesday nights. And so we went to the church building. I walked in the foyer, and I walked up to a gentleman named Wayne. And Wayne and I had known each other for some time. I walked up to Wayne, and I said, Wayne, I got something I want to talk with you about confidentially after Bible study. Can we meet for a few minutes? He said, sure. So Bible study is over with. We get together in the nursery. We shut the door. And here's exactly what I said to Wayne. I said, Wayne, you know everybody in this town. And he did. He was very involved in the Rotary Club, very, very well connected. I said, Wayne, you know everybody in this town. And here's the magic phrase. I said, Wayne, I need your help. I said, Wayne, I've now opened up my real estate investing business to people that I know and trust. And it's by referral only. I'm now paying insane high rates of return to people that would like to get involved and invest in my deals. When you run across somebody, Wayne, that's complaining about the little bit of money they can make in the bank in a CD, or they're complaining about the volatility of the stock market and how they're losing money, would you refer them to me and I'll share my program with them? Wayne looks at me, he says, well, now, Brother Jay, what you got in mind? I said, well, what do you mean, Wayne? He says, uh, well, what kind of interest rate are you paying? And I said, well, Wayne, are you saying that you might be interested? He said, yeah, I might be interested. I said, well, why is that? He said, well, we're only earning 3% in the local bank, and we're losing money in the stock market. He says, what kind of interest rate are you paying? I said, well, Wayne, it sort of depends on the deal. I said, what sounds high to you? He said, well, I don't know, maybe five or 6%. I said, Wayne, I can't pay you five or 6%, but I can pay you 8%. He said, put me down for $250,000. And so the next day I went to his home, his wife's home, and I explained how the whole program works, how they can get their money back in case of an emergency, how they're well protected, uh, how I'm not borrowing unsecured funds, how they get a deed of trust, they're named on the insurance policy, all that takes about 20 minutes to talk through. Well, that 250000 became $500,000. But here is the moral of the story. Notice, I didn't ask Wayne for money. You know, desperation's got a smell to it. The worst time you can be raising money is when you need it, right? So what did I ask Wayne for? I didn't ask him for money. I asked him for his help to spread the word. He became a private lender, and by the way, he and his wife did spread the word, and they referred a ton of uh, potential new private lenders to us that actually ended up doing business with us. So all that story comes down to this. Use the phrase, I need your help to spread the word. 
Awesome. Thank you. Would you also share any challenging experience in raising private private money? Yes, I got one big challenge and I've always had this challenge. I got more money than I can use, right? Of course, that's a pretty good problem. But here's the deal. There's always more money than there is deals. And so here's the lesson. And by the way, Rama, I know you've heard what I'm getting ready to say. I know you've heard this. And it drives me crazy. Drives me crazy. You got gurus going around on the platform saying, oh, just get the deal under contract. The money will show up. You ever heard that, Rama? Yeah. Of course you have. It drives me crazy. And I want to say, where is the money going to show up? Is it like going to rain out of clouds or something? That's stupid. No, the money ain't going to show up. So that's why I preach and practice, get the money lined up first. There's always going to be deals. And by the way, think about how much more confident, how many more offers you're going to make when you know you got the money to close the deal and you can close in seven days. You know, I get more of my offers accepted from my competition because I can close quickly, and that makes all the difference in the world to a motivated seller. Great. Thank you. So any personal habits that are helping you to be successful? Absolutely. Read eight pages a day. Not fiction. Read eight pages a day of personal development books, nonfiction, autobiographicals, biographies of successful people. You just sit down and start your day with your coffee or your hot tea or your monster or whatever it is you drink, and you by yourself, you focus on those eight pages a day. It will quickly transform the way you think and your production. Awesome. So any one book that impacted your life? Yes. I was 24 years old and it changed my life. Obviously, that wasn't last week. I was in a very, very dark place. Here's the book, University of Success. University of Success. It's written by Og Mandino. It's still in print today. It changed my way of thinking and put my entire life on a brand new path. Awesome. Thank you. So how can listeners can connect with you, Jay? Oh, thank you so much, Rama. Finally, I finished writing my book, and my book is called Where to Get the Money Now. And the subtitle is How and Where to Get Money for Your Real Estate Deals Without Relying on Traditional Lenders, Institutional Lenders, or Hard Money Lenders. This is not an ebook. This is an actual book that we priority mail to you in the mail. And it's 20 bucks on Amazon, but you can get it for free at this website I'm going to give out. I'll autograph it for you. We'll ship it to you. Just cover shipping and handling. And here is the website, www.jayconner.com forward slash book. Again, I'm an E-R, not an O-R. That's J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash book. We'll rush it right out to you. Awesome. Thank you very much, uh, Jay. Thank you. Really Rama. appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. God bless you. Sure. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Conner.